Joined by our family of co-hosts, analysts for Young Americans for Liberty, Kristen Tate, host of Stacy on the Right, Stacy Washington, and host of the Joe Pags Show. Turned out perfectly, his name turns out to be Joe Pags. So, uh, Kristen, I, I wanted to get your take on this um, as far as the president. What kind of game is going on? Do you think this is constitutional? Give me your thoughts about uh, the, the impeachment trial, which is supposed to start next week. Well, all of this is largely political theater for the Democrats. I mean, Trump is gone. He's out of office. This has nothing to do with actually removing him. I believe that this is part of a larger plan by the Democrats to keep Trump in the news and continue to make him the symbol for the GOP so that they can try to make it seem like all Republicans are responsible for the riots and, you know, continue calling mainstream Republicans terrorists. This is all just about uh, messaging and branding for them. And unfortunately, this is the kind of thing that our leaders in Washington, D.C. are focused on right now. Instead of trying to cut government spending, get people back to work and help us us uh, kind of crawl out of this recession that we're in. Yeah, Joe, what are people talking about on your show? I'm sure you, you talk to a lot of folks when you're doing your radio show. What matters to them about the impeachment trial next week? Well, what they believe, and I believe they're right, is that this is for two reasons. I don't disagree with anything the previous guest said, but the first reason was I want to be able to say that we impeached him twice. The second reason is we want to stop him from ever running for office again. And my, my listeners and what I say, what I opine about, is why are they so afraid of this guy running for office again? He was a horrible president, according to them. He's a xenophobe. He's a racist. He's a somethingophobe. He's all these horrible things. Why are they so afraid of him running again? Because they know that he's got a lot of support. There's a groundswell of support. My listeners don't like it. They think that the Democrats have, as they always do, have jumped the shark and taken it just one step too far. And they're probably going to pay dearly in, 2000, uh, in 2022 and also 2024. Yeah. You know, something that strikes me, Stacey, is... The Republicans are having a lot of infighting, right? You have some of the traditional Republicans, and then you have some uh, that I, I consider more populist members of the Republican Party who voted very fervently for President Trump. What he was able to do is bring those together, and now they're fighting, right? Well, and it's kind of useless. It's an exercise in futility because without the two parts of the Republican Party, the establishment and the Trump wing, you don't have a party. You have two minority groups. So together, they represent a possible majority in this country. And that doesn't even include all of the newly minted Republicans, people who are dive bombing out of New York and California, and the 70,000 plus Americans who've just lost their jobs because Joe Biden has a pen and a phone like Obama, but no sense with how to use them. So there is no reason for the Republicans to be fighting right now. They should find common ground. But beyond that, um, you know, Kristen and Joe make great points about why the R Democrats are attacking former President Trump. But I think it's a little bit simpler than that. Sometimes I'll scroll through my YouTube feed or I'll even go through my pictures on my phone, things that have been posted. I'll watch one of the tribute videos to the president that we, they were very plentiful from the end of the campaign to now. And you see this man dancing across America. You see 50,000 people, you know, swaying and chanting, we love you. And we see a family uh, that are just, they're almost too good to be true, beautiful, accomplished, and capable. And then we see the Democrats and who they brought into the Oval Office this time. And there's no comparison. It's not just optics. It's about pure hatred and jealousy for half of the country that supported a man that they used to love, that they now hate, because they'll never be as successful as he was in caring for the American people and demonstrating an America first policy paradigm. So that's yeah. what it's really all about. It's Kristen's you know, summation. It's Joe's summation. Uh -huh. But it's the totality of the Trump era and how they'll never be able to compare. That's what they're actually impeaching next week. Heather, how do you read it? Well, I mean, I think that goes back to the argument that, that we were discussing earlier uh, constitutionally. Is this even allowed? And how it's are they not. changing the plans, uh, you know, changing the rules as we go day to day to day? And uh, what we were discussing earlier in the last hour, specifically uh, the former president's uh, attorneys are arguing that uh, pres the former president is protected by the First Amendment because he is now a private citizen 
whereas you have the impeachment managers in their brief, which is arguing that he is not protected under the First Amendment as a government official. So you have two sides, and I do agree uh, with Stacey. I think the bottom line is a lot of folks are afraid if he runs again in 2024, and ultimately yeah. that's what this is about. Yeah, something you, are... Hey, Bob, hey, Bob and Heather, can I give you guys just Go one Joe. quick thought on Go what ahead. Heather just said, if you don't mind? Go ahead. Um, it, it is illegal. It is unconstitutional to try a guy who's not in office. The, the meaning of the mechanism of impeachment, as you guys know, is in place to see if somebody is fit to be in the office that he or she holds. He doesn't hold the office anymore. To impeach him, they could have done that, and they did that. He was still in office. To try him, the one thing that happened that nobody's talking about across this nation that tells us, it's a telltale sign this is illegal, is Chief Justice John Roberts refuses to preside. When he says, I'm not going to preside, he's saying the Constitution says I preside over a trial in the Senate for a person who is holding office to make sure that the trial goes well. When he said, I'm not going to do it, they gave it to Pat Leahy or something. Yeah. When that happened, that was a telltale sign that this is unconstitutional. The Chief Justice just told us all that. Yeah. And what's interesting about that also, you mentioned Patrick Leahy. Um, he will also vote. Right. I mean, and, and that certainly wouldn't be the case. Right. It, it wasn't in the first impeachment b because uh, the chief justice did not vote. So uh, right. uh, we're going to take a break here. A lot more to talk about because there's a lot happening, including today something happened we want to talk about.